Subash Gamir. CIMT is for soft plaque, correct? And I did respond a little bit later. This is not a perfect technology. I mean, Ariana's great, Todd's great, all of the folks that I've worked with, great folks. It's not perfect. It's very difficult to get it right. And these folks take the effort. They're the best that I've seen. There are a couple of others that tie with Todd's group in terms of being good. Now, one of the areas where you tend to get into some problems is the concept of arterial age. You get a lot of argument about that. I still use that a lot because arterial age is just immediately immediately obvious and understandable to everybody. You can get some significant variation and junk sometimes in that space. But here's the thing, whether you're using calcium score, for sure calcium score, clearly stress test, ultrasound without CIMT, none of those show soft plaque. So Subash Gamir, yes, you're absolutely right. The one incontrovertible major advantage is that this is the one that really shows soft plaque. And to get back to our original story, those pimples that are in the soft plaque, when they release the soft plaque, stuff in that soft plaque causes clots. It's not the plaque itself that causes the heart attack or stroke. It's the clot that comes when the soft plaque is released. That's exactly what happened to Tim Russert and others. James Cantor, is CIMT the same as carotid artery ultrasound? Not the same, same ultrasound technology, but the quality stuff that Ariana and I talked about, that's not included. A major portion of the difference is also your typical carotid artery ultrasound is what we call a flow study. It looks at flow. It doesn't look at the amount of plaque. And two key things to understand, as Ariana and I've mentioned in those studies over and over and over again showed the risk comes from having plaque. The risk is not so clear with a flow study. The stress test is another flow study. And if somebody has questions on the comparison between flow studies versus a plaque study, we can talk about that a little bit later. One thing I would add on that before we go, James, is if you can go to the, it's one of the longevity centers in the Northeast. They make a really good point. When you're looking at flow studies, a stress test, again, is a flow study. It does not pick up anything until you get more than a 50% impact on flow. Over two thirds of heart attacks and strokes occur in people with less than 50% impact on flow. So if you just remember that one point, that a flow study is gonna miss two thirds of the people that have events, then you begin to understand just how bad the flow studies are. If you're interested in getting deeper into the ugliness, the old west, the chaos associated with science, that book's a, a good place to go. General population doesn't realize as we get older, the elasticity of our blood system lessens. So when you're 15, Blood, the circulatory system is much more elastic than when you're 55 or 75. And so I think that, you know, in your case where your arterial age and, and mine was much lower than my chronologic age, it gives you a peace of mind that and when you see it going in that direction, it really helps. And I just think the general population needs to understand that with age comes some loss of elasticity. So it's even more important for you to have this information to avoid those ruptured pimples.